so till your 10th standard you have heard that octet rule uh, indicates stability that means if an atom is having eight electrons in its outermost shell it becomes stable that follows uh, that same thing follows in a molecule as well like see for example uh, you are having ch4 and then you say that uh, ch4 carbon is having eight electrons in the outermost shell i mean four of its own and four it is sharing with hydrogen okay that's how you say that the octet rule is being followed carbon is having eight electrons in its outermost shell uh, because it is sharing two electrons each with hydrogen so hydrogen is completing its duplet and carbon has completed its octet that's what we say uh, when it comes to molecules but to be very honest this is uh, the primary information so chemistry has evolved beyond the octet rule also so this is the octet rule but later on we understand in our 11th standard that there is a topic called as failure of octet rule okay the octet rule is not the ultimate uh, information which we are having uh, to explain the stability of certain molecules because there are certain molecules whose stability cannot be explained by octet rule okay now say for example becl2 okay becl2 let me draw its structure becl2 this is called as incomplete octet what it is called as incomplete octet okay so it's showing incomplete octet why because you know that beryllium beryllium has an atomic number of uh, sorry beryllium has an atomic number of hydrogen helium lithium beryllium 4 2 comma 2 so it's, it is having two electrons in its outermost shell one over here one over here and one one electron is being shared by chlorine so if you have a look at the outermost shell of beryllium it is not having eight electrons okay it is not having eight electrons it is just having one two three four electrons and uh, octet theory or octet rule cannot explain the stability of BCl2 ऐसा नहीं है कि BCl2 अनस्टेबल है BCl2 इज वेरी मच स्टेबल बट द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ BCl2 कैन नॉट बी एक्सप्लेन बाय ऑक्टेट रूल ओके सो हाउ डू वी एक्सप्लेन द स्टेबिलिटी सर यू मस्ट बी थिंकिंग दैट सर छोड़ दो ना एक आधा एक्सेप्शन है छोड़ दो इसको बट दिस इज नॉट द ओनली वन ओके आई कैन शो यू अनदर एग्जांपल दैट इज BF3 बोरॉन ट्राइफ्लोराइड वेयर इन अगेन वी आर एबल टू सी इनकंप्लीट ऑक्टेट व्हाट आर वी एबल टू सी इनकंप्लीट ऑक्टेट बोरॉन विद एन एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ 5 Electronic configuration 2 comma 3. It's having three electrons in the outermost shell. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 1 electron is being shared by fluorine. So if you see, the outermost shell of boron is having just six electrons instead of eight. So again, you can see over here, the octet theory is not able to explain the stability of BF3. This is called as incomplete octet. But now let us see expanded octet. That means it's having more than eight electrons. Okay. So for that, we'll take an example of PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride. So phosphorus having an atomic number of 15 with an electronic configuration of 285. If you are well versed or acquainted with the newer way of writing the electronic configuration, then it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2 2 p 6 3 s 2 3 p 3 okay so over here also you can see that in the third shell that the outermost shell is having 2 plus 3 5 electrons so 5 cl are getting attached over here 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so you are having 1 2 3 4 and 5 electrons of phosphorus sharing sharing 1 1 electron from chlorine okay so here you can see that there are, there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons in the outermost shell of phosphorus. So they are also more than 8. Again, it's not uh, octet rule is not able to explain the stability of PCL5. It is having 10 electrons uh, instead of 8. Same goes with SF6. Now, in case of SF6, sulfur will have 12 electrons in its outermost shell okay whereas octet theory says that it should have eight then only it's stable but here you can see that they are having more than eight less than eight still they are stable so then who explains the stability of these molecules who can explain the stability of these molecules so we had to discard the octet theory and introduce a new theory that is the hybridization theory so in this hybridization theory we are considering the mixing of orbitals what are we considering we are considering the mixing of orbitals so hybridization itself means mixing now for the first example let us consider a becl2 
now in beryllium chloride we have seen that beryllium was having an atomic number of 4 with an electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 so if i write 1s2 2s2 like this 2s2 will be having s is having one orbital with two electrons in it then in uh, ahead of 2s2 we are having 2p but that's having zero electrons in it so what is the electronic configuration configuration how do we go about it 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 but here the moment we have entered in the second shell uh, we are having access to the 2p a sub level but it is having zero electrons in it so here is your 2p sub level with uh, three orbitals px py and pz and this is your 2s and these are your 2p x 2p y 2p z so what now it's going to happen is what cannot be explained what could not be explained by octet uh, we are trying to explain by hybridization theory so what is going to happen is this electron is going to shift to Uh, from 2s to 2px, and the moment it shifts from 2s to 2px, the energies of both orbitals become equal or similar, and they combine with each other. They overlap with each other. Who the s and p orbitals? See, never before has s and p orbitals come together. It's like s is having one orbital, p is having three orbitals, d is having five orbitals, and f is having seven orbitals. Isn't it? So uh, now, uh, can you see anywhere two orbital structure over here, or two orbital? There are no two orbitals. We are forming two orbitals by mixing. So we are doing something new. We are doing something new by mixing of two orbitals. That is S and P. So S and P. One electron is already here, and one electron has been transferred over here. So we've got S and P over here. Now we will do what? We will fit in two more electrons of what? Chlorine in here. And when I fit in chlorine in here, this becomes sp hybridized. What does it become? Sp hybridized. This is called as sp hybridization. Okay, sp hybridization, wherein the contribution of s is fifty percent and the contribution of p is fifty percent. Whenever the contribution of s is very large, like in this case, fifty percent, s electrons of s are very very close. to what clue to the nucleus and hence the electronegative character becomes more or is greater in sp hybridized molecules so sp hybridized molecules will tend to be more electronegative than the sp2 and sp3 okay so this is sp hybridized because uh, in this molecule one orbital is being contributed by s and the other one is contributed by p so this is sp hybridized now for the second example which we had seen that was uh, boron trifluoride so in boron atomic number 5 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p uh, 4 plus 4 1 5 right and therefore we'll write like this 2s2 Okay, 2s2, then 2p1. That means 2s2 is two electrons in here. P will obviously have three orbitals, p x, p y, and p z, and one electron is already present. So what we will do, we will shift this electron over here because we need three unpaired electrons in order to combine three uh, unpaired electrons of fluorine. So we will shift it over here. The orbitals energy will become equal, okay, or similar. After which. Yeah, one electron is going over here. After which, the unpaired electrons from fluorine can come and combine over here to form the sp2. Okay, this is spx and py. So s, one orbital of s, p, two orbitals of p, sp2 hybrid or sp2 hybridization. So the stability of BF3 was not been uh, octet rule was not able to be uh, not was not able to explain the stability of BF3, but hybridization is able to explain the stability of BF3. It is sp2 hybridized. The contribution of s is one orbital and with two orbitals of p. So if you talk in terms of percentage, the 33 percent of uh, contribution is coming from s orbital. If any one of you has not understood this, it's simply like the total are three. Three corresponds to 100 percent. Okay, out of which hum, we have to find out the contribution of s. So So one s orbital is there. That will correspond to how many unitary method? One into hundred divided by three. So answer is thirty three point three three percent. So that's why I said the contribution of s in this case is thirty three point three percent. So in the previous case s was fifty percent, right? Half of the contribution by was by s. And I told you when contribution of s or percentage s character, as you know it, the percentage s character is how much? Fifty uh, percent. And in this case, the percentage s character is 33 percent. So that one will be more electronegative. That means sp will be more electronegative. Sp2 will be less electronegative. So what we are going to do now? Uh, 
you are going to solve the say similarly you're going to solve it for uh, pcl5 and sf6 and if you are not able to solve just comment in the comment box and i'll get back to you on pcl5 and sf6